am shaking my head, Samantha. I am shaking my head at a parent who let their kid melt down because he wanted a box of Captain Crunch cereal. Here's the thing. This is what I had to listen to at the grocery store. This kid freaking out. He's probably six. And all of a sudden I hear this mom go, Rufus. And I stopped dead in my tracks, <laughs> looked and thought, who the hell names their kid Rufus in 2024? <laughs> even though I know he was like probably a few years younger, but still, where did that name come about? That was what I thought was my biggest issue. I thought my biggest issue was going to be the fact that that mom named her kid Rufus, but it wasn't. My biggest issue was the fact that that mom went into reasoning mode with the fact that Rufus was having a meltdown. She started to explain all the reasons why Rufus couldn't have the sugar, sugary cereal. I don't think you can reason with a six-year-old. I don't even, like, why are you trying that? Why are you why, doing that? Why are we doing that? We're not even parents, but I feel that's parenting <laughs> 101. I feel like six-year-old sugary cereal, that's a fight that you just will never win. Right? So either A, Rufus eats it regularly, and now mom's trying to change his diet, and Rufus is having <laughs> none of that. Dear mom, what the hell are you thinking? I, I think if she's trying to train change it midstream she's out of luck it's never going to happen he's addicted no. and we're just settle just right. do it we, you just can't reason with a six-year-old and then you know what it made me think of it made it took me back it took me back to all the years ago when my tab drinking cigarette smoking mom would take us grocery shopping i don't think we ever would have had reasoning mode mama present <laughs> nope <laughs> we had yelling so. mom. <laughs> You're going to get had... a spanking mom. <laughs> right? right? Your dad's waiting to hear about this mom. We are going back to the car. <laughs> Drag you into the car, mom. <laughs> we never had reasoning, mom. No, we did I not. I don't remember there being reasons for why we couldn't have something. Uh, yeah, I just feel so bad for the parents today because they they have all these things like, this is how you're supposed to do it. And this is how you're supposed to. It's like... It's a six-year-old kid with sugar. Good luck. Right, right. Good luck. Need, right, we don't need books on this shit. They just you know as no. And dear, you know how we feel, right? Dear moms of today, you've created this problem. You've caused this to happen. And that's, that's it's it's not great that it comes from two single women. So right? I'm like, take that and take that into my Take that and run with it. But guess what? I feel I'm team Rufus. <laughs> Team Rufus. I would want my Captain Crunch as well. So I'm Team Rufus as well. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So we got a great show ahead of us, Samantha. You know what? We this do. Week, I have decided that I'm completely obsessed with uh, expiry dates again. And I feel that we really need to dive into this. Not again. Again. I can't. again. Oh, no. it's getting bad. I think it's gotten bad. Oh, God. I, I'm not ready. I just you need I to don't be. think I can. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to talk about the coffee versus tea thing and we're going to debate it, Lisa, and we're going to, gonna, we're going to go to town. Well, I feel that we're going to be on opposite sides, even of though I we like are. both and you like both, but I feel that you're going to try and bully your way through it. And, uh, I feel I'm going to like, be fine, you win. Cause you know what? A world with Sam and not coffee is not a world I want to be part of. I feel like I can be fairly convincing. I feel like I'm pretty convincing too. You know what else though? Let's see if you can convince the friends of the podcast on why you needed to decide on yet another horrible restaurant. I wanted to try something new. It wasn't new though, right? <laughs> We've been there and hated it before. And we went back and, and hated it more. To the point that I actually had blocked it out and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've never been. <laughs> no, it trust me, fun. you have. Yeah, that should be fun. <laughs> should be good. Should be good time. I am more excited though, because we have... A special co-host this week. Her name is Alex Brown, and I'm very excited to talk to her. It's going to be so fun, hey? Yeah, it'll be good. Hey, at least remember, let her speak, let her speak, let her speak. Yeah, that's for you. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. I've okay. Been all day trying to not interrupt people. I <laughs> didn't have my best day, but I'm going to try. <laughs> Friends of the podcast, uh, you know how it goes, right? Yes. All right, you know how it goes. Samantha, we could do this. We can do this. Hello, friends of the podcast. Hey, everybody. I get the pleasure of introducing our guest co-host, Alex Brown. She's been delighting audiences across Canada for over a decade with her bubbly personality and quick wit as a host and news anchor on television and radio and online as a social media personality. We know 
and love her from her time with CTV here in Saskatoon. And in April of 2024, she joined Roll Call Radio as a feature reporter and show host for 650 CKOM. She is the Saturday morning host of Talk Shots, and you'll hear her voice on the CKOM morning show and news programming. Alex has a passion for community and human interest stories and is passionate about sharing the best kept secrets of Saskatchewan. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Wow, big intro, didn't <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, wrote it myself. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Red carpet is out and laid for you. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. We have been having conversations over DMs for like, all, how long has it been? We've been talking about doing this for quite some time. Uh, so, uh, since For sure, since you did Tell a Miracle. Yes, yes, exactly. And so it's great that it's finally come to fruition. I'm so happy to yeah. hang out with you guys. Yeah, yeah. awesome. We are so impressed with what you did with Tell a Miracle. You were such a bubbly personality on that show. And I was like, why isn't she doing this more? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. It was honestly, it was as someone who grew up in Saskatchewan, born and raised, like we all know Tell a Miracle is a big deal to those of mm -hmm. us that are that are from here. And so yeah. to finally like grow up watching it. I volunteered answering the phones uh, when I was a reporter and then be part of the national cast. It was like totally this full circle moment it was so cool it was so cool i remember watching and saying to sam okay new reason to watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally watch, right <laughs> Aww, <laughs> so thank that's you. awesome now i get to listen to you on my favorite radio station 650 uh -huh. perfect yeah no it's been it's been a wild year for me ups downs everything in between yeah. um but i've found my footing in the radio world and i'm finally knew, like hey? zipping along there and it's becoming pretty natural on the oh. other side of, of the microphone so good good that's well, fantastic I have, no, I have no doubt that you're just going to continue to just succeed right because <laughs> well, and now you've joined us so we're going to step you down a notch here <laughs> and you're going to join the podcasting independent realm right. <laughs> oh, now people stop. will be like no. you were with who <laughs> <laughs> You're doing what? <laughs> oh, they're they're from there awesome. too. Podcasts are so much more fun than talking about news on the mic. Like uh, they're just lots of fun. Hey, joke around. We're not totally about fires and, and, and crazy. And you got the two biggest jokers right here with you. <laughs> yes, Perfect. ladies. I I got to jump into this. I had okay. We're in fall, right? We're in the thickness of fall. I had the other day mm, the ooey gooeyest butter tart. It was so delightful. Yum. Samantha had had raisins. I thought of you because you <laughs> hate them. But then it got me thinking, like it always does. I feel that I still, I'm still feeling like as though the butter tart gets poo-pooed. Nobody cares about it. And I feel like, do you still feel that way? Like, especially in the prairies? Because in certain yes. small town circles, the dainty tray usually has a butter tart or two. Well, yes. that's true. It does. But it yes. just doesn't seem to compare to the pumpkin or to the apple. Mm. I understand right. what you're saying. But I feel like for those of us who are like, want to go back to the classics, like I have butter tarts upstairs on my counter. Oh, I've also so had my father-in-law for Thanksgiving. <laughs> nice. I didn't know if he was team raisin or not. Oh. I like raisins in my butter tarts. I think they're a nice little surprise. But I did buy them without because I know the jury is out on that one. And were they gooey? <laughs> were they like drippy? They were actually. I could have had drippier. I could have had drippier. Oh, okay. They were grocery okay. store. They were not made by a baba. But they were fun <laughs> and they were lovely. Right. You know... I think that's our next tour, Lisa, is a butter tart tour of Saskatchewan. Oh, my God. Let's right. Can I let's... go on the road with you guys? Yes. yes. We'll go on a butter tart. It's all the small town ba right. bakeries, right? They're going to have the best stuff. And that's Back a perfect lead into tour. our perfect lead into our <laughs> winter tour of, of what arena has really does have the best hockey food. <sighs> Rink burgers. Food is Rink another food? level. Have you guys had the wonton soup? at the old granite curling club i haven't had it but apparently the reviews by like sh top chefs are amazing and i saw that club. i yeah. saw that clip yeah. <laughs> and i'm like it's a curling club a <laughs> curling club we had a reporter do a segment there and she got to taste like a little bit of everything and she was like it was it meets restaurant like it was so good really yeah 
Huh. I feel like we're going to be touring for the next six months, guys. Yeah, and eating a I'll, lot. I'll clear my schedule. <laughs> right? Let's take this show on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Sounds Why like not? fun. <laughs> but you know what? I got to do something fun that I that I was really looking forward to. And Lisa will poo-poo this. I already totally. know that. I already, I've already poo-pooed it. I know. It, it was... I did pumpkins after dark. Ah, I oh, did the little the carvings. I did the little scenic tour at the Prairie Land. And you know what? It was cheesy. I'm going to give it that. Uh-huh. Uh, but I loved it because, you know, I like a little cheese around my Halloween. Oh, yeah, and, Halloween girl. And I just walked through and there was, you know what just was disappointing? No scary music. I was a little oh, disappointed. Because it's family friendly, probably. Right, it's a it's little too family friendly. Lisa, are it's a you pumpkin. more like Halloween scary like gory is that more your speed or no no, no halloween is my speed oh yeah. <laughs> we're against halloween you know what i hate i yeah. hate clowns yeah oh that makes sense don't because that reminds me of when we went we, okay so oh this is years ago now was it four years ago not enough years in yeah between. four years ago ish we went to a halloween we went to um like uh you walk through it it was like on pike lake road and it was this person's house and they had this whole setup and there was car- it was so busy and there unfortunately at the end were clowns <laughs> and the clown hey? yeah and the clown followed her all the way out because the clown was a busybody <laughs> who heard me saying the whole time there better not be clowns so help me god if there's a clown oh god it and was great that. the clown oh heard that gosh. and they were like kind of mocking me oh god that was so much fun you like clowns alex clowns. let's give them a class in boundaries right right <laughs> we don't need them i don't need them in my life i don't need them right here <sighs> but what about you activity <laughs> do you like like do you do halloween yeah, I am a big costume girly. Um, oh. This originates like, you know how people, when they talk about their childhood, they're like, oh, I was really into Barbies or I was really into trucks. Like, I was the costume bin kid. Like, if a classroom had a costume bin, if a waiting room had a costume bin, I had several <laughs> costume bins. Like, I just wanted to be in full costume. And so, um, <laughs> a lot of my career, when I do segments, if I'm at a production or a musical or um, like anything that a feasibly a costume could be worn, I will be in that costume. And I so saw. Me, a, go ahead. I saw a clip of you doing the king's coronation. Correct. Dressed in costume. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This this is who I am at a at a soul level. I need to be in co- like everyday clothing is not enough for me. I need to be a fairy queen. I need to be you know uh, like ethereal being. Yeah. Um, actually, my best friend and I went to Europe in 2018 and we did England, Scotland, and Ireland. And at a lot of the tourist attractions, like the castles, um, there were a lot. There was like always a kids section where it was like dress up as king and queen. No. <laughs> I was in there, like a dirty shirt. I was pushing kids. I was like, give me the crown. Let me take a picture on this throne. That's so awesome. for Halloween for me, I, I like it because I like fall. Like I like coziness and I like, right. you know, I like candy. I like chocolate. But for me, it's like an excuse to be like, okay, I can actually go all out with my costume <laughs> and no one can say anything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, you know what? I I heart I love that about you because I too, I for one, for a birthday one year, I had a coworker make me a, a full robe with a hood so that I could be um, the witch off of Sleeping and that, Beauty. Me, and that's a great costume for you, Sam. <laughs> That's and so I, cool. I, did, I did the whole thing. I had prosthetics. I got an apple. Like, it was the whole thing. Looks so, good. Yeah. And this year I get to go in camouflage because it's the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, so it's... I'm pretty stoked about it. It's too much Halloween. It's all too much Halloween for me. I'm a like Halloween in Grinch. Mean Girls, when Katie Heron goes to the first, she's like the new student. She goes to the Halloween party at the high school and she's in full like zombie bride gore makeup and everyone there is just in lingerie and animal ears (laughs) that experience 
experience happened to me at my first high school party in grade nine. Oh. I went in grade nine to a new friend's house party as full Dracula, like wow. dripping blood, white makeup, black eyes, the cape. <laughs> I show up with fangs and all the girls are just in like cute little like outfits. outfits. I have that experience. But you know what? Commit to the bit. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. So it's funny that you say commit to the bit, right? I appreciate that phrasing because um, we went out for Sam's birthday on uh, Friday. (laughs) And Sam and I are notorious for not having great luck when we try new places. Mm, yeah, for some reason we get on a kick where we're looking for some place new, got to try some place new, and Sam did this on Friday. So um I enjoy a good glass of wine with my meal. And I swear to god, I've never ever met a glass of wine I didn't like until I drank it on Friday night. Oh, so here's what I'm saying, Samantha to you. <laughs> Dear the Olive Garden. <sighs> shaking my head it seemed to not be what you built it up to be well i just wanted to try it again because you know we've only been there once and it wasn't great the first time (laughs) what do you have against olive garden it's like a little it's a little too fast food pasta for us i think pasta now we're a little snotty alex we're gonna have to admit that with the italian embassy here italian embassy (laughs) We walked in critical judging. Yeah, yeah. The ratatouille saw you come in, I'll tell you that part. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Uh, the, their, their whole bit on the bread and the breadsticks, delicious. Like, why do places not have more endless, bottomless bread? Like, uh, right? yes, some places have sliced bread or buns. I want bottomless I want bottomless <laughs> Breadsticks, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Like or Red like Lobster the, has it down pat. With the buns, even the keg has that delicious bread. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like, like that's what restaurants need. I can overlook a lot if it's been good bread. That and it puts you in a warm and fuzzy type of mood. Right. <laughs> it totally did. So yep. Samantha, I'm just shaking my head with you because I'm like, stop picking new places. I'm can sorry. I I just it wasn't really new, but I wanted to try it, and we did so. But I got a free cheesecake out of it for my birthday, so that's Ooh. good. Thank well, you. Lisa. What kind was it? Uh, I think it was just a regular cheesecake with strawberry sauce. So. You said it was fancy. It was ricotta. <laughs> well, oh, no, it was ricotta. Ricotta. And no, all of a sudden, I'm no, Italian. <laughs> the embassy is here, everyone. <laughs> For all your passports. Oh, gosh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But I think I think uh, uh, this Friday, can we just go to where we go? Yes, fine. Whatever. Thanks. I'm going to give him a shout out. <laughs> Earls. Whatever. Right? Um, but apparently, guys, I and I hate to, I'm so relieved. Uh, the U.S. election is only three weeks away. Can we be done already? No, Please. I'm excited. I'm excited. No. I'm I, a super newsy. I, 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 no surprise to anyone in case anyone is, is just tuning in. <laughs> I work in the news. And <laughs> it feels like the election cycle between Ugh. the states between our province, our city, and then potentially the feds, it just feels endless. Like you, it's hard to keep up what campaign promises apply to you, even if you are watching the American news cycle, totally. which many of us are just for purely entertainment, but also to yeah. know what's going on, you know, south of the border and how it could affect us. It's hard to keep up with, okay, wait, is that, what does that belong to? Who made right, that? Where does it go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It totally does. I right? totally agree. But it must make you super busy, hey? It does. Um, there's, you know, the thing, that, so right now I'll just speak to, I can't, I'm not covering anything to do with American politics, but um, right now the provincial election is underway. We have a few more weeks and it is it is busy because there are um, press conferences and events and uh, campaign, like, Uh, platforms and promises that are rolling out every single day every day so it's like you have to stay on top of it and stay well and you also have to know what both sides have promised or so when you're at you know the other side you can then question them and kind of say this is what they're saying so you got to kind of do almost like flashcards 
Um, oh, God. <laughs> like, it's like trying to figure out who belongs to what and what's happening. And um, yeah, it's it hard it's to keep really it busy. straight. And the leaders are the leaders and the candidates are traveling all over. Yeah. So it's like where okay. like I've been up to Shellbrook. I've been all the way down to Lang in the past few weeks. Wow. So you just busy. travel. You just follow them all wherever they go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And try to capture those moments. Don't you think the American politics would be kind of cool to be a part of, though? Yes, definitely. I do. Like, yeah, um, I, it, it is a bit frightening right now with like how many, you know, violent yeah assassination attempts that they're like well, and that they said that they thwarted a third one right over the weekend yeah the safety and security um the only thing that i have to compare it to is when uh reporter colleagues were covering the convoy um okay that was happening in canada now i'm not mm-hmm. going to get too political but i just mean in terms of like the gravity of the situation yep. people are feeling very strongly when emotions are running high and there's a right. crowd mentality when you would totally. be covering american politics they do a lot more rallies than we do and i think that would just be my concern of like you know when when emotions run high what's going to happen here yeah yeah that For would sure. make me shake my head at like all of the potential dangers that could come right definitely and i mean I saw, like, going back to the Canadian convoy um, in Ottawa coverage, like, I had colleagues that had so many things, like, things thrown at their heads, um, oh. like, cans, full cans of drinks, like, thrown at them while they're live on the air, and they're, you know, like, people trying to get in their face and put, like, it's, like, it's real and it's happening and just because we're not reporting on a war zone or, you know, the American, like, it, it's still happening here where there is a sense of volatility towards yeah the media right now totally hey yeah yeah that's pretty crazy like to me i don't know that's like like it just it it i think it's important right we need it we need to follow it we owe it to ourselves to know what's going on but mm. i think the bs that goes along with it sometimes is too much well and that's just it um i think people lose like I, I really don't like the overarching term of the media. It feels like a very bolded, like the mafia. Like right. it feels, <laughs> you know, like we have this, you know, dark room meeting where we decide what the narrative is. Where right. really, it's just your friends and neighbors from your community sent out on assignment. Like all we are told is, hey, you have to be at this place for nine o'clock. Like go find out what happens. Yeah. There's no narrative at any station that I've ever worked at. There's no narrative of like, we really want to go with this angle. So try and dig up some stuff with this angle. Like it's always just go and see what you get. Like yeah, see totally, what they yeah. say. And you find this as as just a person, like just a human being a bro- who is a broadcasting student, you go to the event, you find out what happens, you take your notes, you get your shots, and then you go back to the station and figure out like, okay, what what are people going to care about yeah. the most out of this? And if it is, you know, they didn't, they lied. They, they said one thing at this press conference and I caught them saying this thing at another press conference. Like, it's yeah. not that we're, the media is the media trying to totally. come in and sway you it's like <laughs> i was there and i saw this and i yeah heard exactly right it's, yeah. it's first-hand account exactly totally so what you're saying alex is that you don't get hazard pay right is that what you- <laughs> no but seriously like there are elements of um i remember one time i when i was reporting in winnipeg and i've done a TikTok about this but i was the traffic reporter and so what that meant is i had a camera mounted on my windshield from inside the car shooting out through the windshield straight forward and i was sitting in the car with a microphone on narrating what was happening there was a a apartment fire that i was at so the camera shooting the apartment fire i'm in the car and i'm just talking about road closures i'm like so yeah you can see there's road closures blah blah blah. so while i'm live on the air a gentleman i don't know a stranger i don't know if he was i don't know what what his deal was completely mental illness drugs you know maybe just a lost soul i have no idea but in he opened my passenger door and got in and just sat in there while i'm live on the air oh no oh my god like someone and it was pitch black it was like four in the morning i don't know where i like you know that's insane it and so all i said was can you get out please (laughs) (laughs) please go okay and he like 
like got out. And, oh. Like I'm in a marked vehicle that has the station's name on it, so it's not like I looked like a bus or a limo or like a taxi yeah, exactly. service or something. And uh, yeah, wow, the anchors hey. back in studio were like, uh, uh, "Okay, Alex, we're gonna check back in with you in a bit, and hopefully she's okay." <laughs> and my director's like, "Get out of there! Get out of there!" I'm like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow I, like I would have thought that but that's crazy yeah, yeah. oh that's, gosh that's crazy so it guys... and it's it's not just um like interactions in person it's also the social media uh oh commentary. i bet you it's nasty hey like i bet you there's some trolls completely it's something that i'm pretty used to like nothing really shakes me um at this point anymore especially when it comes to like a personal like i'm used to a lot of attacks on my looks and my weight and my right. um <sighs> makeup and clothes like that's all fine like you guys can think whatever you want like yeah. i'm i'm secure i have people who love me it's all good You're but good what it. bothers me is this time around this is i don't even know how many elections i've covered at this point at least a handful and you are you are assigned like okay you know this reporter is going to ndp this reporter is going to sas party this reporter is going to the united party like everyone has their assignments for the day and they expect you to you know live tweet what's going on provide updates to the website get photos right. and so my struggle this season for this this has never happened to me before except for right now people are thinking that i am a mouthpiece for one of the parties because oh. i was reporting on what happened and yet oh. that's your job for the day yeah and so my mentions were just brutal ladies like for oh my quite, god when the election was called and i was you know tweeting out like this is what they said this is what they said this is where they are this is who's yeah. here people are saying you know it's such biased coverage. Where's the other side? I'm like, I'm one report. Look at my colleagues. They're at the other station. Yeah, they're the other side. <laughs> yeah, they're at, I, and I was retweeting them. I was like, look, we've got everyone's out everywhere, but I'm just one reporter. Yeah. And so, yeah, people were getting really up in my grill about, you know, you're only showing this and where is all the, I'm like, I'm on assignment. Wow. I can only show you where I can't be in two places at once. And now are you able, are you allowed, you're allowed to fight back? I mean, there's no like a lot, like there's nothing that's like a rule or anything, but generally we try not to engage with anyone who is oh, I'd be all over that volatile. Shit, eh? I know it doesn't get you anywhere though. It really no, doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, but sometimes you feel a little bit better, Alex. <laughs> we, had, we had one troll once and, and I'm going to say it and it very pales, pales in comparison, right? But she had decided she hated our podcast because I talked too much about getting my hair cut and she trolled us and trolled us. <laughs> and I tell you, I bitched right back at her. Hey, like I am like, and finally Sam had to step in and Sam's like, and, and we're done. I'm like, oh, I can't believe you're making me stop talking to her. Yeah. Right. That's usually my role. <laughs> I know. Well, right? and it's. It's tough in this day and age because so both my parents were in media. Uh, one was a weatherman and one was a news anchor. Right. Um, and so I've seen the media, the local media landscape from the time I was very young right. and now working in it. And the thing that's changed, ladies, is the access to media personalities. Like the fact yep. that before people would have to sit down compose their thoughts on on paper yeah. like write out a letter yeah. find a stamp yeah. pay for a stamp get it delivered <laughs> outside the city like the ctv station in regina was outside the city at the time so right. it's like get you know get it sent out of town essentially and people like probably it wasn't worth it like no, yeah maybe much one hassle. in every 10 might do something yeah but like they might call but like the effort that it took it's like you'd you'd it'd be easier to just complain to your neighbors or your yeah, coffee totally, circle. Totally. Whereas now you can get at me with the touch of a button. Yeah, like yes, you can type yeah. out whatever you want. So the access has changed. Yeah. And and people can be so vicious. Like we sometimes get a bit of that if we if we post something controversial. We're not even very controversial. No, we're not. Like for comedy. <laughs> but if we do put something like when everybody was shaming Princess Kate and they were saying how, you know, she was faking her cancer, we took that right. to TikTok. Holy people. Ugh. Mm -hmm. right? like it like you know what it is it's so easy right oh you tough guy look at you right i can't get at you i can't see you but yet you got a computer so you can like lash out at the world mm -hmm. oh i know it's nuts and it's not fair and it's like 
I mean, there's a, a, the thing that is good is a lot of these social media platforms now have filters. And so you right. don't have to see a lot of this stuff if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, I'm of the mind of like, you know, you can say what you need to say. Um, if it makes like, I just think of the people who are sitting down and actually like typing this out. And they're like, I got to tell her I don't like her lipstick. Like, she needs to know. <laughs> Right? The top of your to-do list today, my friend. You send let, that. Let it go. You send that email. Oh, right? I just want to. I just want to say, I've seen your TikToks when you've gotten ready when you were doing CTV, mm-hmm. when doing the morning show, and I'm like, girl, you're up early and your face is on. Good for you. I know, I know this is a podcast, but I am wearing makeup from like I worked at 4:30 this morning. I was helping out on the morning show. And so I have been doing my makeup at my radio desk. I've done a couple of TikToks on that. And so this makeup is on from very early. And I did have a nap before this. Wow. So, hey. you know. Yeah. Dear people bitching at Alex Brown. Like, give her a break. <laughs> Cut her some slack and leave I'm her just, all alone. I'm just a normal person. Like, that's the thing. We don't have, it's not like we have teams that are managing our, so, like, exactly. our social medias. And we, right. we have, like, agents and managers. And, oh, she'll never see the. No, I see it, it all totally it's coming see it. to my phone. Uh, people. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? I'm moving on to a different topic that hopefully is just going to be a bit easier on our souls, guys. <laughs> okay. Samantha, they finally aired a Saturday Night Live that I actually thought had some funny bits in it this week. Oh, God, and I missed it. <laughs> yeah, right? I thought Aria Grande, Ariana Grande was on it, and she's always good, hey? I thought there were some funny skits, but I got a comment on Stevie Nicks. And I know uh, there's a disclaimer that says, and look at, I'm bashing. So actually, I'm a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> that there, there was a disclaimer saying that there was a glitch um, just prior to her singing. But here's the thing, okay? I love Anne Murray. And my Anne Murray retired from singing because she said she, has a, she knew she had a voice that as a senior wouldn't hold up because her voice was so unique. Dear Stevie Nicks, I felt that she needs to take that lesson and she needs to let the she needs to let the one winged dove go. <laughs> it's gotta go. That was poetic. Right? Cuz that's the song that she sang, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. No, 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 it's not working for you anymore. <laughs> do At you least think not in that though, like maybe not in that environment. Do you do you think that we as a society like not specific this is not uh, directed at you but do you think we as a society like i feel like we try uh, when older women are like starting to go into natural aging and in their careers i feel like society really wants to put them out to pasture and see them like okay you're a grandmother now like run free but then you have like (laughs) you have old 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 men like you know mick jagger and keep right still like what it's I don't know. Is it like a no? I think what you're is right. The double standards thing. It's a totally I, double standard. I want Mick Jagger to stop touring. I <laughs> want the Rolling Stones to stop doing this. I need them because it's the creepy. He's creepy. You're 80. Stop it. Right. Like I'm like stop it. But I love Stevie Nicks, and and the first thing I did when I thought that she was singing way off key is I googled how old is Stevie Nicks. Mm. So I totally just did what you did. She's 76. And I'm like, it's okay to let it go. <laughs> but like, hey, okay now, I mean, Dolly Parton still go like, I, is it just right? like, is it for you? Is it like, you know, live singing is really, really difficult. Like we, you know, we all know yeah. that. You know um, what it is so, for me, Alex? It needs it, to sound perfect. I, yeah. It, I'm judging. It has to be perfect or I don't. Okay. Well, I think the Italian you embassy say. has really high strict standards here. <laughs> <laughs> Right. The bar's high. Yeah. Like I high. you know, but I get disappointed when I hear people sing live too, and it could be of any age. Like cause you really want them to sound how you hear it on their you but know. I guess that's on us, right? Because we're we're th- we're not thinking it cl- through clearly enough, right? No. You know, like I, I know me singing live is probably not as good as it would sound if I was in a recording studio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And what, never sing. What, when are you selling tickets? <laughs> <laughs> When's your concert, Lisa? Right? When are you going to Wembley Stadium in O2 and, and doing Madison Square Gardens, Lisa? <laughs> With my, and with I think my... there's also like there's such a double standard dichotomy there with like so here so 
Remember back in the 2000s when Ashley Simpson went on Saturday Night Live yep. and she had a backing oh. track. And like if you've ever toured the Saturday Night Live studios, like if you've done the Rockefeller tour in New York, like first of all, the like I can't imagine the acoustics in there are good. Like Probably it is not. a soundstage. And so so I think a lot of artists are like, how am I like SNL is notorious for people having like bad live performances. Totally. And I think it hey. has a lot to do with the venue. But you look at someone like Ashley Simpson, who lost her entire career, her entire career, because of a backing track. When that's the standard, like how yeah. people have backing tracks, yeah. you sing over it. Yeah, when but it's like, time, it's like it's like. But it's like what's in the news now, right? With the TV show Monsters, right? Everybody, yeah. we, we kicked Millie Vanilli to the curb for lip syncing. And yeah. now, and that's what everybody does is lip syncs everything. It's, and that's the thing. And so then, so then you have artists that go on and they're like, I'm singing live, like I'm doing the thing. And it doesn't sound good. And then they got to <laughs> deal with me. And then they got to <laughs> answer to Lisa. <laughs> Every artist comes on this pod. I'm not, I'm not backing yep. down, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're hor- but I get we, what you're saying. Yeah, we admit freely that we pull our judgment pants on every time we record. So and don't hey, judge I'm us. Not- I'm no don't judge us. Like I love gabbing with my gals just as like it's okay to do it in a safe space. Totally. And this is a safe space. But totally. I think it's like what if you were to relentlessly reach out to St- Stevie Nicks oh. and like that's when it crosses a line. Like if you're gabbing with your girls or your guys and are like, yeah. oh yeah, this like that was bad. It's like, okay. But I think totally. when it reaches yeah. the level of like you're now trying to what? Yeah. And I will go on the record to say I did not reach out to Stevie Nicks. <laughs> Stevie Nicks did not return comment in time for broadcast. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Stevie Nicks has what... replied and apologized. <laughs> she, she did not return our call. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but let's be honest, Stevie Nicks, I think when she was done that performance, probably was like, this was not my best work. Maybe. And then she probably thought, and then she probably thought, I'm Stevie Nicks. I don't fucking care. Right. Exactly. I'm Stevie (laughs) Nicks, people. Like, I care. She's like, how many people in my age are performing Saturday Night Live? Right. It's me. It's me. So... (laughs) Good points. Good points. Oh, yeah. All very oh, valid. God. <laughs> um, but I, I got to talk about something that is just, it keeps affecting me. And I just, I need someone else to join me. I don't it, even think Alex is old enough. So. Well, I know. And this is what makes me sad is when does menopausal boob sweat stop? Okay. So it doesn't. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> Short answer: No, never. Sometimes we talk about <laughs> menopausal issues, right? Because we're old ladies. We're we're in our age bracket. <laughs> well, right. Okay, so it doesn't stop, Samantha. The next thing to look forward to is it starts rashing. Oh God, I don't need that to happen. And then you're going to go to the doctor and you're going to get a cream. I feel like you're speaking from experience. I feel I'm a big busted woman, right? <laughs> There's only so much lift for so many hours that it's possible for them. Sorry, Alex, that you have to hear this. I cannot, yeah. I cannot speak to the menopause side. I'm 32. Um, <laughs> but I can speak to being living in a larger body and having like rashes and, and like right. folds and things that you like want to maintain good hygiene and like with sweat sticking in places, like yeah. it's obviously going to get irritated. So, one of the things that really helps is like, an antibacterial soap like literally dawn like the an- antibacterial like, one like, if you wash those areas that get irritated oh. it like because it's like the bacteria that that grows yeah <laughs> is this too gross no oh my <laughs> god no that's revolutionary yeah would have thought like <laughs> Like, yeah, hey, so if like it if helps a duck in oil, find, it's like, going to help your boobs. Yeah, an antibacterial, like, body wash soap. Like, I have Dawn in our shower for just, like, cleaning the shower. Like, I yeah. sometimes do a scrub down in there. Yeah. But sometimes I'm, like, a little on the loofah. Huh. <laughs> I feel that maybe she, at 32, has solved the menopausal problem. I think she might have. Samantha, we need to tap into this. <laughs> we need to market her. And- <laughs> We need to go to the younger generation. They have figured stuff out. Up. It. We're too old. We're just like we're done, and we're well, not thinking so anymore. Many products now for like 
chub rub like between your thighs or like right. full body deodorant like that you can put everywhere, everywhere. and not just under your arms like yeah they, they're coming out with these things now right. that like are the generations before us wouldn't have had access to they're they're gonna make your next phase of life bearable yeah i, I hope so provided they can hand <laughs> provided they can figure out the temperature change <laughs> i already run hot so i feel like i'm just gonna like i'm gonna oh. fall back into yeah. snow in my front yard and just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally it's not pretty it's not pretty <laughs> it's uh it's, it's really not. really not <laughs> it's not good okay you know what else isn't pretty i talked about this at the beginning samantha i'm not gonna talk too loudly about this because my husband he's here he works nights he's sleeping oh secret time. somebody's husband <laughs> is not paying attention to the expiry dates on the groceries on the bread <gasps> products and i get obsessed with it and i don't want to eat food that's going to expire it's bread sam it's bread like moldy bread no it, it's not moldy yet but it's gonna be it's gonna how do get you, moldy if it's not moldy yet like how like can you taste a difference i could taste it not fresh <laughs> i love that you're asking her questions right now. I'm, a, I'm a journalist sam i know but it's just like this is like oh as someone who has lived with this for 20 plus years <laughs> her obsession with bread expiration dates is redonkulous because it, it's it, not fresh she doesn't believe as soon as <laughs> it's the day before the date she won't eat it if it's the day of the date it's done done and she, even if it doesn't look moldy it's never gonna happen never, never gonna happen Lisa, are you are you neurodivergent by chance? I don't think so. Because I, I am. I have ADHD and I'm a little neuro spicy up here. And I, I also know. fixate on expiration dates and it drives my friends nuts. So I have an app that I log expiration dates. <laughs> And she's worse than me because she's younger. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. How did you become half Lisa and half me? Stop it, Alex. It's, I finally <laughs> found my birth parents. You found your birth parents. <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> Two shameless cat ladies. <laughs> I have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It drives me crazy. When oh I, my first God. thing I do is I look, if, if he's gone to get the groceries, I look at the expiry and I'm like, oh. I can you only eat those buns them. till tomorrow. So you know. I, I need that I need that app. Because <laughs> I so bread is it, it's not my hyper fixation. Like that is, you know, I can see when it's moldy or what feel when yeah. it's stale. Yeah. So it's more of a like sensory, like I can glean that. My worry is more with things in the fridge. Uh, I have like an issue milk. with leftovers. Like oh. I can eat them the next day, maybe even the day after that. But after that <laughs> No, I'll only make an exception for I only make an exception for turkey or or roast beef. Yeah, Thanksgiving leftovers or cold pizza. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I, I can do, do cold, cold pizza, pizza for one day. Days. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I then can here's see that. the kicker. I'm going off course here. Here's the kicker for Alex. I am not a journalist. Do you <laughs> have seasonal foods that you like at different seasons and not at different seasons? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Because not all food should oh be eaten all the time. I know. I don't want soup in July. Right? But I want soup every day in October. Definitely. I had a, so I had a potato bacon uh, at the Boom... Uh, potato bacon soup at the Boomtown Cafe today at the Western Development yeah. Museum. Underrated restaurant. If you're ever looking for like oh. a good homemade meal and a cheap meal, like uh -huh. chef's kiss. Wow. Soup and a sandwich is my ideal meal for everything huh. no matter where i am give it no to me at a gala and now you just became my daughter <laughs> <laughs> i love this for us lisa it's so I we just adopted people can we have a for this episode of us be like a 1980s like family photo with, like, <laughs> Photoshopped on. Absolutely. Be so good at glow. Uh, <laughs> like in the distance. Oh That's my god. Too funny. Oh my god. Oh. There it is. There it I is. love this for us. Right? 
It's just how it's meant to be, Samantha. <laughs> Okay, so crazy. we got to talk about your weirdness around pumpkin spice because you've been on, you've been dared, Lisa. I did it today. Oh, you did do it today. I it today, but I can't air, I can't air the video until this comes out, right? <laughs> okay. I she was today. She, she's been dared by one of our listeners. Okay. <laughs> to drink a pumpkin spice latte because she pumpkin. hates it. <laughs> what do you not like about it? Oh, uh, well, I had my first one today and I did not like everything about it. I didn't like the texture. I didn't like the fact that it's pumpkin. I didn't. <laughs> oh. So it's interesting to me, going back into journalism mode here, let me just <laughs> call you out on some factual errors here. Um, the, okay, so I find that real pumpkin, like if you have like a pumpkin soup, or yeah. like roasted pumpkin, like you know how sometimes like places have like a little boutique, like seasonal veg. Like if you have a squash or something like it tastes, that tastes pumpkin-y to me. Like when you can like actually taste like the squash taste. Fake the pumpkin fake tastes. pumpkin more, tastes fake nothing is, like pumpkin pie and everything. But fake pumpkin is disgusting. More is disgusting er. <laughs> like it's disgusting er. <laughs> what I just Oh, it's a like, mouthful of yuck. Do you like like fall spices like apple pie, so, like cinnamon and I'll stuff? I love apple pie. I like cinnamon. But not pumpkin uh -uh. spice. Because uh -uh. pumpkin spice is just a mix of spices. Doesn't matter. Like doesn't you can matter. buy pumpkin spice no. like in the spices aisle. Like it's a little... Pumpkin no. pie, pumpkin spice <laughs> needs to stay in the pie. It doesn't need to go in a warm drink. That's so I'd be disgusting. interested to know, blind taste test. This is the next podcast I'm inviting myself to. <laughs> I will serve you a slice of apple pie. Two of them. One is just like cinnamon and nutmeg and one is pumpkin spice. And you tell me which is which. I will oh, accept that challenge. That's a good challenge. Because I... pumpkin spice is just a mix of other spices. I think you're getting in your head about it. Nope, and no, not not two pumps of it. That's disgusting. Okay, yeah. The thing about PSLs at Starbucks specifically is like the big orange sludge. Like, it's that's disgusting. Not, yeah, it's so disgusting. <laughs> so my reaction will be quite humorous when people see it. And nobody should be surprised <laughs> that in after fifty five years, I've never tried it, nor will I ever try it again. Now, for me, I am not a pumpkin spice latte girly. Like, you know how sometimes when they start rolling out that campaign, because like yeah. every coffee shop has something pumpkin spice now. Like right. it started with Starbucks, maybe. Don't quote me on that. But like now everywhere, like it's Tim's everywhere. has their version, second cup, whatever. Yeah. Um, I am not someone who rushes out and is like pumpkin spice of the season. I am that way for candy cane hot chocolate. I am like, oh. move out of the way this is my season as soon as they <laughs> as soon as they launch it at any like tim hortons but like anywhere i am like get out of my way i will consume 800s of these, these this, this is season. my time yeah my time to shine Obsessive. is now it's so good i don't like mint hot chocolate i want candy cane hot chocolate and what's the difference well it's not as much peppermint it's like a little oh. bit sweeter okay like you know how there's like peppermint spearmint like mm -hmm. well, i want like the candy of candy cane maybe you're gonna have to dare me to try that <laughs> and i'm going to <laughs> when we're on the back roads butter tour i'll get you a candy cane on chocolate. <laughs> we are gonna be flying high full of sugar it's gonna be yeah, awesome high. High. <laughs> and then we're gonna crash <laughs> <laughs> total crash right? oh so, my god so so stay tuned samantha for that video all right okay all right okay this just came across today and i'm shaking my head at it i took a picture of it i took a screenshot i sent it to you sam yes i said Blech. i shake my head at this it was the sis one of the sister wives who claims that she ate all of her baby's placentas hmm does that is that normal? Okay, again, don't have babies. It seems it wasn't a sister wife. It was the daughter of one of the sister wives, McKelty. Oh. Was it? Yeah. No, oh, I don't read very much. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do and she that. ate a piece of the raw placenta from each child she had, and she's had three. Raw, hey. She, yeah, she is, ate it raw. So I've heard of women getting it encapsulated, like in capsule form, and taking it. 
to like yeah. and i didn't have as much of an issue with that because i was like your body your choice like if you want to like yeah. have that yourself raw seems a little bit like cannibally to me it seems a little cannibally but i guess you grew it yourself so yes yes i guess the fruits of your labor literally <laughs> i'd like to think i'll have like i don't know a piece of pizza instead yeah. I mean, I said whenever I, I like, I, I hope I get the chance to have kids, but like, I just get me a sushi platter. Like, I want give birth, and then I want the full party tray on my lap. <laughs> like, oh I my want God. a dynamite roll immediately. Immediately. <laughs> no. And I always thought if I ever had babies, all I thought was, don't hand it to me dirty. That's a bad <laughs> first impression. You're like, this is icky. This is, get it off, get it off, get it off. Right? <laughs> it would not have been a good first impression. So many reasons why you never had kids, hey, Lisa? Oh, just one of the many. <laughs> they're sticky. <laughs> they're sticky. They're, they're sticky. Oh, there's too many reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, way too many. Yeah, but that's that's an, that's an I shake my head, because I'm not sure if everybody is going to be eating raw placenta, but, you know, I don't know. To each I think own. I'm good to part with that. I think I'm good to say yeah. goodbye to that part of me. Although when I got my, this is not related, but this is how my ADHD <laughs> brain works. When I got my wisdom teeth out, uh, the four teeth, the four teeth were like on the dental tray. And I was like, can I keep those? And they were like, no. And I'm like, but they're mine. Like I grew them and they were like, it's biomedical waste. Like it has to be, it has to go oh. immediately. Oh. And I was like, but they're like, hazardous to whom they were in my like they're mine <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting nope. that like some things immediately have to evacuate the premises right. like teeth but the placenta they're like here dig in bon appetit yeah like that seems weird right <laughs> like teeth seems like what are the less radical what, what are the regulations and the bylaws around <laughs> and, who, oh. and who's sitting around deciding that correct i don't like know. when do you get called to that assignment alex you know, I'm going to dig deeper into this. Right? Like, get your reporting <laughs> skills out get to the bottom of that, would you? If you could just find out for us. Right? <laughs> Sounds weird. Because hey? I don't know if you know this about us, but we don't dig deep and we don't check for facts. So. Oh, okay. Love last week, we just, last week we were so we just shoot last week we were so the, excited to talk about as well <laughs> yeah it's we a little disclaimer <laughs> don't just, look for facts Love but the that. beauty though is that the friends of the podcast they will they will they will go to our facebook page and they will they will fact check for us and give us the answers it's like oh who knew? thank you <laughs> Yeah, if we're ever wondering if we're right or wrong, they always let us know. And we love that about them. Yeah, they're like, yeah, it you didn't check that, hey? You yeah, know, it totally. takes a village, and you guys have one. <laughs> we have a big we village, do. right? They got our backs. <laughs> oh, but I got to shake my head because, you know, God bless TikTok because, you know, I'm on there occasionally. But I got to shake my head about videos of people making pets with, like, wild animals. Yes. I don't get it. It's not safe. It's not safe. <laughs> I don't get safe. it. And I'm seeing raccoons. I've seen a bear. And I'm like, these are not pets. These are not pets. No. Like, um, at all. I think it's it's tough. Okay, so full disclosure, I all through high school and university, I worked at the Toronto Zoo. And oh. so I worked with a lot of different animals um but we all it was also a rehabilitation zoo so if like okay. an eagle flew into a car uh what is the front of a car called like a grill a gr yeah a gr like if, if there was like an accident like it would be rehabbed at the zoo like behind the scenes okay like not on display for anyone but it would be like so it could be released so i think like i find it interesting that when humans intervene um and they go out and specifically seek out like, oh, I found a nest of bunnies. I'm going to bring one in. Yeah. Like that's removing them it's from not good. their habitat, from like right. their smell, their like everything. And I know some people justify it as like, well, the mother hasn't come back. Like we have to do something. And it's like, th that's not where they're meant to be though. Right. They say, right. leave them alone. Don't touch them. Yeah. Right? Because they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out, and we and you don't know if another mother might come along and adopt. Yeah. Like you know, like animals yeah. do weird things and not weird like things, but things that make sense to them. And, yeah. So I think it's like 
it is a bit cringe when people are like, especially like, have you guys seen that chimp docu series on Crave? No, no. What is it called? Chimp Crazy? It's like the women um, who have like adopted like chimpanzees and like raised them like babies. Oh, and like that, that. Pro- that's more of an issue for me. <laughs> like the exotic animal pets. Yeah, yeah that's no, wrong. No. I just like I feel like when you see these videos and because I don't know about society, but I feel like if this person encounters that exact same animal on their, you know, walk or wherever they are, they're going to think that they can pet it because they've seen a TikTok where that raccoon was friendly or that bear was really great. Samantha, right? I I almost pet a fox and didn't realize I remember yes, years ago did. I was waiting for the bus and I was standing at the bus stop and it just looked like a mangy little dog was coming up and I was like oh dog and all of a sudden the lady's like it's a fox 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 and I'm like oh, it's a- <laughs> it is a fox as I had my hand oh, out ready no. to pet it yeah and well oh, and I shake my head at when you're when you're in the mountains like Banff Jasper whatever and there's a bear in its natural habitat. Like that's its land before it's ours. And people are on the side of the road, like trying to get the best Instagram picture, trying to oh. go up beside it, trying to pet it. Like if there's right? cubs, it's like, this is not a Disney experience no. where they're animatronic oh, and you right? can have a one-to-one <laughs> moment. Like this is a wild bear. Yep. Get back totally. in your car. <laughs> yeah. Get, and keep driving. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't I don't and I worked out in the Rockies for a couple of seasons and that's all I saw tourists do. And I'm like, it's, stop it. Like get don't approach them. Like don't approach them. Right? You're not gonna like be so the wild. There's don't no approach scenario me. where you're calling them and they're your new friend they're that like goes tag on along pal. With you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, like, it's just not gonna happen. It's no. not gonna happen. You know what apparently is happening though, guys? Apparently we're saying bye-bye to the beloved Stanley. It's voted the most popular item to fall out of popularity. I'm ready. This year. Are you ready? I So I don't have a branded Stanley. I think it's like an insane amount of money for a water bottle. And I have right. plenty of water bottles. Like, why create more waste? Right. I do have an off-brand Walmart one that's like the same shape. And like, it looks the same. It's just not the branded. Yeah. And so I originally bought it just because I liked the colors and I was like, oh, this is great. Like, it's my favorite color. It's going to be, it. you know, it keeps everything cool. Great. The balance ratio on these things, the base is so tiny. And yeah. then the majority of the weight is up top. Like, They're it chippy. falls over yeah. with, you know, a whisper of wind. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I never That's understood funny. the big craze. <laughs> Oh my god no like, and like, like if, if it's just that you can buy accessories for it and dress it up like yeah i know people buy little purses for it or charms totally. or like the lip gloss clip-ons or like whatever like yeah you can do that with anything yeah, like totally you right? can put you some can. on your purse if you want yeah right <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong right we took a stanley up to the lake and we had a great stanley slushy too much boozy drinking game out of it Beautiful. it's fun for a drinking game yeah, yeah that's about it though but that was about it <laughs> I just couldn't believe I was I was just painting one of our rooms upstairs with my mother in law and it's my Stanley probably fell over four times and it's loud. Like those things are just a solid yeah, piece of metal. Totally. And we're painting and she my mother in law kept saying, like, you're scaring me because she kept thinking I was like falling off a ladder. It's just the, it's just the off brand Stanley. Right? Sorry. It's just my cup. Don't yeah. worry about it. Okay, but you know what I saw? I saw baby Stanleys that can fit a shot. Why, why are we waiting? And they had a little, that? they had a little straw in it too. A baby is it, I've seen the keychain versions, but people put like Tylenol in it or something. Like oh. they're just little tiny Stanleys. Are you talking, like, are they? No, it's time? like, it's like a shot, st- like, like decent sized Like cup something you'd give your Where you could fit like a little, a little ounce of alcohol in it. Huh? For, I mean, like, I'm all for a little ounce of alcohol anywhere, but. And who isn't? I don't need it in a Stanley. <laughs> I prefer mine in a shot glass. <laughs> what happened to the hip flask, you know? Right. Oh. Oh, or remember what the bear the skin? Are you old enough flask. to remember the bear skin? Like, remember that? Yeah, like, where you just is put my, that like, under your coat? And... that I can, or, yeah. like, a seashell that I can <laughs> right? just drink out of. That was the 
That was I'm the best. I'm bringing back a seashell with a straw in it as my everyday. Right? Do it. Let's just do something exciting. We don't need Stanley. They've made enough. It's time to move on. I know. It's we're over. <laughs> right? So this is an important debate. Alex, we don't know. Going, going ahead, we don't know where you stand on tea versus coffee. Okay. Here's the, th so I came across an article, oddly enough, because I'm not really a big reader, right? And what it says is it says that drinking coffee has been associated with lowering the risk of heart disease and diabetes. I'm going to say coffee's let me down because I have had a heart attack and borderline diabetes. And then it says that tea <laughs> contains caffeine that's been shown to improve cognitive function and alertness, and it is beneficial for reducing stress. Where do we um, with that information? Like, uh, caffeine is going to make you jittery, which is going to make you stressed. Like, it's and, just... and they say tea has more of it, right? <laughs> it does. It, in fact, does. Like, yeah. there was a... So, as a former morning show host, like, you survive on coffee and tea. And so, there was a time where um, the newsroom that I was working in, like, everyone switched to tea because the caffeine concentrate was higher. Um, but honestly, I think it's like, I love a cup of tea for me though. I'm very picky. Like I'm, I was like a big Royals fan. I'm a big British fan. And so I like a proper cup of tea. That is not my something... daughter again. Yeah. I have a Royal family collection. <laughs> oh, amazing. So do I, um, I, that is not something I can throw together in a thermos, like drinking a, like kind of bad tea, like in a vat isn't like I want to have a nice cup of tea I want to sit for me it's like a it's like a glass of like fine whiskey or something like I want to sit and enjoy my tea like I want to have it in a cup I want to have like I for me coffee is more like convenience it's fast like bad right. coffee is still coffee but bad like coffee's got a job to do hot water yeah coffee's got a job to do tea it's like you know what it's like before I go to bed I'm just gonna have a cup of tea yeah, and it's so nice. I find tea is like such a nice treat. Yeah, it's relaxing. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, what I'm going to tell you is you don't want Sam to not have <laughs> coffee in the morning. Oh, brutal. Oh, my God. She literally, she'll wake up without a coffee and be like, morning. Mm. <laughs> like, only person who can wake up in a bad mood because she hasn't had coffee yet. It's like, it's coming. It's yeah. coming. I can't. I like coffee. I have a certain kind of coffee that I enjoy. I don't like all coffee. I'm got, I've gotten snotty in my old age. Yeah, but you'll drink any coffee if you have to. If I have to. <laughs> right? You're not going to you're not going to with you're not going to say pass up a coffee. Yeah. I you know, I like coffee. I like tea though, but tea I feel coffee is a morning drink and tea is a night drink. But okay. I don't drink I don't drink caffeinated tea after a certain time because I'm, you know, old. And don't want to stay up forever. So I, for me, a tea like you is like, it's like a stress reliever at the end of the day. I'm drinking like a mint tea and things like that. Right. So, and I but I. It, like afternoon tea, like when the clock strikes three, it's time for tea, you know, like a Sunday a afternoon. <laughs> like I want the sugar. I want the cream. I want like a scone. I want the experience <laughs> of it. Like the tea culture Maybe is like obviously has ties and like colonialism and like let's not get into that. But the tea culture, <laughs> tea culture <laughs> of like the fancy dainties and the little mm -hmm. sandwiches, like I right. love that stuff. Coffee yeah. is like you know out on the road, blue collar, out in the rig. Totally like, blue we collar. Have our black co like it's a different culture. Yeah, for sure it is. Yeah, it's an attitude, right? Got to get it in. Got to get the coffee going. What, where do we stand on energy drinks, you two? Oh, God. I don't do an energy drink. Too I much? don't do... The, yeah, I've uh, never tried. I've tried. I feel like okay. my energy is usually So we're okay. just going to start a series called Lisa Tries It. <laughs> <laughs> but Lisa didn't show up for the recording because she's not trying it. <laughs> it's food and drink based. <laughs> yeah, I never oh tried. Oh, my God, totally. I was the same way was like oh my god why would you want to put that in your body um until tell miracle actually bringing it all the way back to the start of, of the pod wow. here i tell a miracle is you got to be up here for many hours oh, yeah. right like there's not a lot of downtime to like go and kind of uh, the thing that a lot of people um don't understand is like right now when i'm talking to you guys i'm really like animated but I'm just, I'm like a regular person. I need to recharge and like yeah. be a lazy bump on a log too. Like I'm not 
upstairs with my partner and my pets like running around entertaining all night long (laughs) you know so like I also have to have downtime and so when you're doing something like tell a miracle where it's endless hours of being on um I found I needed that extra kick I'd never been an energy person uh drink person before and I will say so there's a link between like ADHD and caffeine having no effect whatsoever. Oh, like okay. oh. when I can drink coffee right now and it won't affect That's me like going me. to bed. That's like me. I don't okay, think it does anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to do some research on this. Um, Alex, that would explain a lot. <laughs> I have to learn what it means. I'm not diagnosing you. I'm not a professional, but you know, read up. Um, But um, I will say that like, for me, like coffee doesn't do literally anything. It's a nice warm drink that I like enjoy in the mornings, but like really doesn't, if I wake up and don't have it, I will be the exact same. It's no big deal. Yeah. Whereas an energy drink, like, so for example, this morning, um, I worked a shift that I don't normally work. I started at 4.30 a.m. and I haven't worked that shift since I was at the morning show at CTV. And so I took a sugar-free Red Bull to work and they're like tinier cans than like a, you know, they're skinnier. Um, That actually does impact. I noticed quite a bit of difference of like, I'm awake. I'm not jittery. I'm not jumping off the walls, but like, it actually does give me a little bit of a boost that like, okay, I'm not Uh dragging my feet. Okay, no. go. Maybe so. That's interesting. Maybe something know. for you to try, Sam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm never going to ditch your coffee a bit. No, I will never ditch my coffee. Thank it's you. Never happening? Nope. No. <laughs> I love it too much. I know you do. And I need you to have it. Okay. All yeah. right. Right. Totally. I need you to have it. So we do this thing on our social media, Alex, that uh, uh, it's called Sunday Spotlight, right? So we ask a question of our friends of the podcast on our Facebook page, and uh, we ask them to uh, to kind of let us know uh, kind of where they weigh in. So Sam, what was... Uh what was oh the question this week look at i already don't remember the (laughs) question this week was what's your favorite meal of the day uh breakfast lunch or supper and then what meal is it that you had so we got so we just like to share some of the answers that people uh send us so melody she replied that that uh actually she broke all the rules actually she did she likes brunch with boozy beverages. I feel that she could be an honorary one of us. <laughs> she could be a friend. Love that answer. <laughs> right? Because why don't who doesn't want to start a day with a mimosa? Correct. Uh, Karen, Gracie, Nancy, Kelly, Paula, they all picked breakfast. Uh-huh. And Cindy, as usual, is it the same Cindy that we know? Yes. Our Cindy. Our Cindy. <laughs> that I can't say her last name, Carter. Um, <laughs> Has conditions depending on where she is. <laughs> she always has conditions. Cindy's, she doesn't let us down with that girl. Always got conditions. Carol and Stephanie, they like supper and they're going with pasta and fish. I personally was the only one that chose lunch. I also <laughs> would pick lunch, Sam. Breakfast. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> I love a good sandwich and I love soup. Yes, so it's perfect. <laughs> That yes, was my do. reasoning. So I'm <laughs> right. allergic to eggs. And so that's really limited my Aww. breakfast. Like my whole life, I can't I can't have omelets or like wow. anything. Um, and so whenever someone's like, let's go for breakfast, I'm like, is there other things? <laughs> yeah, Alex, there's always pancakes. That's what this parent says. Exactly. Yeah. There's always pancakes. Oh. So those were some fun answers for them Yeah, this week, that was right? a good one. Well, Facebook Tuesday too. We do One Has to Go. We've been doing this for 110 years now. And... Uh, <laughs> Not even joking. Uh, and uh, la- this Tuesday or today, um, it was about pasta because I chose Olive Garden to go to for my birthday. So everyone hated the 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 ziti the ziti pasta, yeah. and I, I was hate like, it too, and I've never tried it, but I hated it too. <laughs> I know. I just don't understand why people hate things they've never tried. Would do we have three hours for the show? <laughs> I can give you 125,000 answers. I know, but why? It's just a little tubular pasta. And then it's sort of served with like, you know, a tomato sauce. It's like if you put normal. melted cheese on anything, sign, like I'll put, I'll eat drywall. Like if there's melted cheese <laughs> right? on it. If there's can cheese. You bake, can you bake the drywall with cheese? Yeah. Yeah, like I'll that's what it. I mean. Like, you know, bake, bake a nice ooey gooey, have a good cheese pull. I'll bite it. Then you're drywall. good with it. You're good with it. That's And awesome. like people poo-pooed 
spaghetti and meatballs. That's so boring. That's my go-to all of a sudden. For some reason, I'm back to spaghetti and meatballs or spaghetti bolognese. And I, but you know what? The my heart, in my heart, I want it baked. I always want it baked. And everywhere I've gone and asked for it baked, it's been half-assed baked. It's not baked. The bake I'm thinking of is like the layer of cheese and it's gooey and mm-hmm. oily. Totally right. right. Totally, that's what you want. Uh, what and I they want. hate a carbonara. My favorite. <laughs> they hate <a> carbonara. <laughs> They hate a carbonara, right? Uh, I felt that for a bunch of people who claimed that they probably would love pasta, I felt that they weren't loving pasta. No, they were not. Right? It's kind of funny that way. Uh, we have a thank you for to Christina, who she took us up on our challenge. She increased her Patreon donation to $10 a month. And mm-hmm. guess what, Christina? We got some new I Shake My Head swag coming your way. As long as Sam gets it in the mail to you. I will get it, yes. And now, and and now you have extra, what does she have, extra extra, extra content each month? She gets access to extra content that we're going to do. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then we also have a new Patreon member, Alexandria from Denver. Denver. Who joined our VIP $5 tier. Her German friend recommended our podcast, and we are very glad that they did. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was hilarious. Cool. Her German friend who lives in Germany recommended a Canadian podcast to a Canadian living in <laughs> the States. And a shout out to Singapore again, still on the upward swing. <laughs> Singapore is loving I shake my head. We are totally global. <laughs> I love that. Congratulations. Kind of I know, right? <laughs> you know what Italian else we're going to say? Con- done really well. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. You know what yeah. else we're figuring out really good is our fantasy football. Oh my God, I won my game. Yeah, and I'm 6-0. <laughs> and oh, Thanks for asking. <laughs> right, Who Alex, cares? Alex, sports fan? No, not no. even. Oh, uh, I'm not even going to be like, oh, the rider. No. No. No, this is it's the okay. difference. You're more like Sam. Why do I Sam, do more Sam's fantasy a fake drafting, fan. though? Like, can I draft my ultimate Broadway lineup? Yes. <laughs> like why why does it just have to be football like i want to you know do the tony awards and like see like bring them in bring them. <laughs> <laughs> you and sam would have fun with that I'm sure. yes i'm called the fake fan so i've been the fake fan forever in a day and i don't watch sports i don't care <laughs> but i appreciate them uh but this year i got dragged into fantasy football and, and I've only won two games. Yeah. So. How do you? How did you go about picking? Like, did you just randomize it? No, I was just ESPN. like, they look good. Oh, they got lots of points. Let's choose them. Love that. Uh, I did Sometimes that too. Sometimes it's just about a vibe. Like he has a kind face. Right. I like his last name. Yeah. Well. Yes. And that's how I I chose Travis Kelsey and got Travis Kelsey as my oh, tight end. So. Of course you did. I, know. I don't even know what that means, but like, congratulations. <laughs> But it you know Travis Kelsey. Promising. promising. <laughs> oh yeah. So no, we have a, we have good times with the fantasy football right yeah. now. But yeah, it's a good. T- it's it's lots of fun. Alex, <laughs> you got five minutes for one quick thing we didn't tell you about. Okay. It's not bad. It's just a fun game. It's a okay. quick game <laughs> called this or that. Okay. We like to play it with all of our guests. It's like a yes. trademark. It's our signature guest thing. That's what Lisa Ready. thinks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I th- okay. I zeroed in. This gets us going. Okay. Netflix or Apple? Oh, uh, Apple. Okay. All right. Lisa? Pie or cake? Cake. Cake. <laughs> lipstick or chapstick? Uh, liquid lipstick. <laughs> okay. All right, she's changing the rules. <laughs> right, she's innovative. Hot dog or burger? Hot dog. <gasps> You're back hot to being her daughter. <laughs> oh, any hot dog. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> oh, a bad haircut or a bad dye job? Oh, God. Neither. Bad but... haircut because, because there are so many extensions and things that you can, you can make it through growth. Right? Oh, that's true. Favorite day of the week, Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Sunday has the Sunday scaries. Yes. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Ocean or lake? Lake. And then my favorite, last but not least, <laughs> donut or bagel? 
bagel. <laughs> I'm a big, like, people have asked me, what's your favorite meal? Like, you know, like, random questions will be like, what's your favorite meal? Mine is, one of my favorites is, a, like, smoked salmon bagel, like a bagel mm. and lox. Okay, I can't so would turn that it be, down. Is that your death row meal? It might be. Really? Like I oh. like if 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 I had a death row meal, I'm having like an all you can eat endless bottomless buffet. Like I'm putting this thing off. Like bring in the next <laughs> course. I'm gonna go like a pinata. I'm doing a McRib. <laughs> really? Oh, love them so much. Finish your time on Earth and just 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 loving it so much. <laughs> And Sam, what are you doing? You're doing pork chops with mushroom sauce, I bet. No, probably no. not. No? No. That's oh. not my favorite, favorite meal. Not your favorite, favorite meal? No. Well, I have lots picking? of favorite things. Pick one. Mm. Oh, she's got I don't know. Out. I am difficult because that's, that's too much. It's too much choice. And you know, you'd never end up on death row. No. Oh, you know what? I would. You know what I would want? What? The best prime rib known to man and a little Yorkshire pudding to go with it and maybe a baked potato, twice they baked say potato. your death row meal is really, really good, so. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good. You're going to have a Yorkshire pudding that. and a baked potato? Yeah, because I would want that too. Oh. Like, why deprive lot. yourself in that moment? Like, who cares? Right? <laughs> yes. Right? Have six like, baked potatoes. I guess that's kind yeah, of exactly true, right? And you're on, you're, and you're about to die. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you might as well just go with it. Right? <laughs> you well, betcha. we've come to almost the end. I'm going to quickly l remind everybody to connect with us on our many social platforms. Or check out our website, which is ishakemyheadpod.com, and sign up for newsletters. Check out our blog, leave us a message or voicemail, and stay to listen to any of our episodes. If you want to catch up, uh, want to catch our videos, check out our YouTube page and subscribe to get notified of a new episode. And we do have some changes to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash I shake my head. Uh, we have updated our Patreon. We have better incentives to join, more interaction with us depending on what tier you get, and new gifts as well. So go check it out for the existing Patreons. If you bump up your generous offer by $2 or more, we'll send you some new goodies. And if you need some new I shake my head swag, check out threadless.com. Yes, we went back to threadless. <laughs> and search I Shake My Head and we have new and old logos items available. And we just want to thank John for putting this together for us today. We want to thank Alex for joining us. Thank you Absolutely. so much, Alex. Thank you this so was, much for having me. It was so much fun. We just got a new, I have a new daughter. I'm excited. I, my <laughs> I love the fact that she's like 32 and is our daughter. I know. You're all grown, so it's good. <laughs> Right? That's so perfect, right? It's been a blast and hope yes. you'll, uh, you'll join us again and, uh, you know, much continued success to you and what you're doing. Thank you. And I can't wait for the Backroads Butter Tart Tour 2025. <laughs> Let's do it, right? Let's, Let's for sure. It. I've got to figure it out. How much yeah. fun would that be? Oh, my wow. God. Okay. Oh, there she go. Oh, Hi. <laughs> our, our our editor can fix that maybe i think so <laughs> right? yes but definitely let's do that tour definitely awesome. yes for sure okay thanks for staying with us have samantha. a good one samantha always a pleasure yeah, it should be mm. <laughs> Who's a pretty girl? I'm a pretty girl! <laughs> <laughs>